Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin. This is my co-host, Teddy. Sorry, guys, I hadn't been posting as many videos as I would have liked to lately. Uh, unfortunately, I've been passing a kidney stone, which if you ever have or ever known someone that has, it's extremely painful. I did tweet about it, but then I deleted it because I thought you guys, you know, because I've been so sick lately and having all these problems, you guys would just think I'm just whining by now. So I decided not to. Um, but yeah, so that's been a bit difficult to get to, but I'm on the sort of tail end of it now, so I'm all right. Anyway, today I wanted to make a video for you guys because previously I made a video talking about Zen 2. And there are quite a few comments of people telling me basically that I was uh, not hyping it up enough, you know, I was sort of like underselling how good Zen 2 would be and everything like that. And it's just, I've been doing this for a little while now and you tend to get a bit worn out by the hype trains. Basically, you, you start to look at things and go like, oh, well, that would be cool if that come, you know, if that actually happens, but I'm gonna hold it back because so many times, you know, things have been hyped up and then there've been a huge letdown. Uh, I can only imagine uh, what, you know, older tech reviewers, guys have been doing it for quite a while now, like uh, Steve and Brian, you know, the true OGs, like they must just be completely by now uh, not buying into the hype for anything because they'd probably be disappointed so many times. Anyway, so people were saying that I was basically underselling it. And now we have some more announcements from AMD to go off and it kind of looks like I maybe I was. So Zen 2 is looking like it's going to be uh, even more of an upgrade than I think a lot of us assumed it would be. So from WCCF Tech, most people think that Zen 2 is nothing more than a generational frequency IPC bump. That is very wrong assumption. That is a very wrong assumption. As Zen 2, as an architecture, is entirely overhauled. The jump from Zen to Zen Plus, which is the 1000 series to the 2000 series, was one incremental step. The jump from Zen Plus to Zen 2 aims to be a revolutionary step. Yes, the rumors claim that the IPC improvement and higher clock speeds are there. They also mention that those are higher than expected on very early engineering samples. This shows that final retail samples could be more than 15% IPC jump versus what we've been hearing for a while. So what does this mean? So I think a lot of us expected Zen 2, so the Ryzen 3000 series, to be uh, a, a bit more of a jump than what we'd seen from Zen to Zen Plus. Uh, but this is looking like it's going to be even further than that. Uh, the IPC, they're saying, is going to be an IPC gain of 15% plus. Plus could be something like 20%. That would be massive. Uh, trying to think about it, I can't even remember when Intel had an IPC jump between two generations that was that large. Assuming it is, but even say 15%, uh, usually from Intel it's been 5%, maybe maybe way back it was, you know, you'd see maybe a 10%, but um, yeah, a whopping 15%, that would be massive. Now this is because obviously it's a lot of architecture changes and things like that. And also the frequency being bumped up, that would be massive as well. That would be absolutely huge. Uh, a lot of us were saying that they were hoping that Zen 2 would give sort of five, uh, 4.5 gigahertz, but it's looking like that may be a bit under it as well. It may be a lot, lot higher than that. So another article so this is recent announcements from amd so zen 2 if you do not know is only seven nanometer architecture uh zen plus is obviously 12 nanometer what we've got right now so from the article basically it's saying that tsmc's leading edge seven nanometer process is going to deliver significant performance power consumption and density generational improvements so what are the main things to take away from this? There's a few bullet points there, like the improved execu execution pipeline, uh, front end advances and all that. But the main one that a lot of you guys will be interested in is the uh, doubling of the density 
the core density. I want to keep this video from getting too technical, but the Ryzen CPUs, all the new Ryzen CPUs, they're basically broken up into what's called CCXs. That's basically the cores all together. It's kind of like its own CPU, kind of. And uh, so what this means is they've doubled the density, which means they can pack more in there. Now, what does this mean in the real world? Well, the Ryzen CPUs have been eight cores, 16 threads, the, the top ones. This is the mainstream line I'm talking about. So I would imagine with Zen 2, we're going to see that go up. Uh, I would be very surprised if the top one is not at minimum a 12 core. But I would honestly think with the doubling that just double the cores, I think we're going to see a 16 core on the mainstream line. That'll be the top one. There'll probably just be one very, very top uh, CPU. I don't know what it'd be called, 3900X or something like that. And uh, 3800X something. And that will be the 16 core. And then we'll see it sort of trickle down from there. So that's really good. Uh, half the energy per operation, that's massive as well. Uh, Re-optimizing the instructions cache, that'll be big. And there's just going to be a lot happening here. I'm really looking forward to this. I know a lot of you guys are as well. The Intel 9th gen launch. Let's talk about how this is relative to the whole CPU market. So let's bring Intel into it. The 9th gen launch, I think, didn't... I, I don't know what Intel was maybe expecting from it, but I still think whatever their expectations were, and no matter how good their actual launch was, with all the controversy up after it, with the paid benchmarks and stuff, um, that just caused a lot of bad press for them and it sort of poisoned the ninth gen launch now to be fair to intel the 9900k is a good cpu if you're talking about pure performance it's what i run in my personal rig it's a very powerful cpu you cannot deny that very very powerful eight core cpu at five gigahertz it doesn't muck around with all my you know rendering stuff what you're seeing this video right now was rendered with the 9900k and it does a very good job it's also very good in gaming the issue is it's so expensive and it's also pretty toasty uh and it doesn't get better with the 9700k that's also very expensive this is the area where ryzen has done extremely well the value for money and it's what's really killing intel right now and part of that is uh, because of the architecture of ryzen this will just exacerbate that further. I think after Zen 2 comes out, unless Intel gets the 10 nanometer stuff sorted, which by now I've just sort of almost given up hope on, and it looks like they pretty much have as well. Um, it's just looking like AMD is firmly taking the lead. Many would say that Ryzen 2, the 2000 series Zen Plus, has already taken the lead. Uh, I would say I agree with that in terms of value for money, but that also sort of went for the straight up Ryzen CPUs. But what I'm looking for is just raw performance. When we throw the money side of it out the window, we just look at the raw performance because Intel still has technically the most powerful CPUs uh, and on the mainstream lineup for gaming and even now for productivity. I mean, the 9900K beats the 2700X in productivity too. But this will be AMD fully reclaiming that. That's my point I'm getting at. This will be AMD really showing them, you know, this is what we can do. This is a big advance in terms of the CPU. And this is, we're, we're reclaiming not only being the best value CPUs, but now we're just going to have the best CPUs, period. Intel better think up something because looking at all this and everything we've looked at today, this is looking like a huge jump. Um a 16 core Zen 2 7 nanometer CPU running at say 4.8 gigahertz that's gonna be incredibly powerful that would beat the 9900k um, Intel's got to do something this is looking crazy crazy powerful and I think it's I think it's a good thing in certain ways I think consumers like us I mean we obviously want the most power we can get for our money and it's really good that this is happening and hopefully intel gets things together and they bring out something that's just as good value 
that's really powerful as well. And then you have two great choices there from, from either company, or obviously multiple choices from each company, but you know what I mean. So uh, yeah, that's basically the information we have so far. You can get into a lot more detail. I didn't want to do that in this video because I like to keep things kind of basic because um, I know a lot of you guys out there uh, don't understand all the super technical stuff and you just switch off when, <laughs> when I start talking about it. But uh, in the comment section down below, what do you guys think? Let's carry on the conversation. You know my opinion. I want to hear yours. Uh, from this new information about Zen 2, it's basically saying that it's looking even better than we thought it would be. Do you think this is going to be like really, really good? Do you think I'm still underselling? Maybe you think I'm overhyping it now. I want to know what you guys think on Zen 2 in the comment section down below because I know many of you guys have been waiting for it and you're, you keep telling me, you know, I'm going to upgrade my CPU. I'm just waiting for Zen 2 to come out. And uh, yeah, so I'd really like to know what you guys think. Now, if you haven't subscribed to Tech Showdown already, I suggest you do. It really helps me out. It shows you, uh, shows me that you support the channel, and I really appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.